All right. Good morning. Thank you for being here. Uh, UAB heads to Army this week to take on first place and unbeaten the Black Knights. So with that, I'll kick it over to Coach. Well, I don't have a lot to say. Um, I think the theme of our failures has been too much talk, not enough action. Um, words are cheap. Actions speak louder than words. And, uh, you know, it's... Uh, something we've taken very serious the last you know since really for a while now but really since the game when you're hum humiliated like that you have to take a very close look in the mirror and um starts with the person in the mirror so um with that you know there's not a lot to say except we got to do a lot better not just say more things so fire away Coach, from Saturday, just what have you seen out of this building and what have you seen out of uh, your players going into another tough one on Saturday? Well, I, you know, I think the biggest thing was uh, in, in those moments, and, I, and I, I've been part of some really low moments, um, but that was one, you know, fourth quarter of the game, all I was thinking about is how do you, how do you address your team after something like that? Um, so, you know, I, I told him, I said, I've let you down, you know, I have not, I have not prepared you as well as I wanted to. So if you're looking for somebody to blame, blame me, you know, my biggest fear was the finger pointing game, um, in fighting. Um, I think when people are hurt, like we were hurt like that, human nature is to be mean and to direct the blame somewhere else. And I told him, if you need a place to direct it, direct it right at me. Don't, don't make the mistake of directing at each other. Um, our, our issue is not our want to. We have people that really want to do it well. Our issue is our know how to. Um, and obviously, that, that starts with me. So. Um, I have I've done a poor job, as the record shows, knowing how to get this turn this um, team into a winning team. So um, that was the that was the posture. And then again last night as we met, uh, we're really throughout the day and last night that it was kind of a continuation on that theme of, you know, I have to do a better job of preparing the coaches and players to do the things it takes to win. When, when you lose a game like that, when you're coming off a game like that, yesterday particularly, how much was, how much less, I guess, do you really dig into the tape and, and, and more just kind of worry about people? And, and, or, or do you? I mean, and what's the difference, I guess? That's a really good question, Steve. It's a both and. Um, primary concern was people. You know, that's just who I am, right or wrong. Um, my primary concern was. Um, how are my people doing emotionally? Um, but then at the same time, you have to use the tape. At, and really, it's not just Saturday's tape. It's, you know, looking at what have been habitual things that have that would hurt us. And asking why is it not like that Tuesday through Friday? Because there's no evidence during the week that would make us think what's happening on Saturday would be consistent. Um, you know, I've been around football where your your preparation is terrible and you know that game day is going to be rough. <laughs> but your practices, like, I've had really smart people come in and watch practices. And nobody has told me that we're not preparing the right way. So something's happening on game day that's forcing our players to not play to their potential and our coaches not coach their potential. And, and that's kind of what I'm trying to figure out as it comes to the tape. So it's not just one game. It's, it's what's happening in, in uh, really the, the, the span of our time together that has not allowed us to play uh, as we prepare. Coach, along those same lines, when you're out on the practice field this week getting ready for another solid opponent, 
Do you want to sort of remember how that game made you feel, or do you want to look at it from, hey, we've got a fresh start Saturday? I think it's always better to flush. You know, I, I think if you carry over big wins too much, complacency can be dangerous. You carry over devastating defeats too much. Um, confidence, uh, negativity can come out. Your confidence can be shaken and negativity can come out. So um, I, I've just always believed that, that the flush method is the best method. Um, but I, I don't think you can deny that when you're humiliated. I mean, humiliation is an interesting thing. If you really, And I have dug into it because <laughs> I've experienced it. You know, it's a scary deal because when you're humiliated, um, you feel naked, right? All your flaws are out there. Everybody has an opportunity to, to chime in on them. It's deserving. You know, so everything you get, you probably deserve. But there's a byproduct of humiliation that can be really powerful in a good way, and that's humility, you know? And uh, I know personally humility has been something in my life that God has worked really hard on over my 52 years. And um, when you go through it, it stinks. It's painful. It's lonely. It, you know, you have that sick feeling in your stomach. But as you get older, you realize that something good can come out of it too. So... My point being is that I think that's a lesson we all can learn. And when there's a humility to how you approach life, um, maybe that's something that can unlock us too and help us be our best. Um, Coach, both Army and Navy Service Academy teams run the triple option mm -hmm. undefeated. What does Army do that Navy didn't? It create the same conflicts, you know, without getting exo geeky, they, they create the same conflicts. Um, and I don't want to say this quarterback runner is better than Navy. Navy's dude is, I mean, that guy is freakish, but they're different. This guy is, this guy is Cam Newton, right? Where the other guy was Lamar Jackson. Does that make sense? Um, both equally awesome, but attack you differently. Um, I mean, this guy, this guy is what you want every one of your football players to be on your team. He is gnarly. He is tough. He's a glass eater. He's fiery. Uh, the team go. I mean, every time he carries the ball in the C gap. You know, you, if you go to the sideline as he's doing it, you can almost see like the like with the anticipation of what could happen. Um, like he's running over, destroying defenders that are bigger than him and um, supposedly more aggressive than him. So, um, like it, this is a uh, this is a game where you as a defender really have to decide before the game starts. You know, are you willing to take this on all day long? Um, Army hasn't trailed at all through five games, and they've only given up 14 points total in the first quarter. But what what is the key to just getting off to a good start this Saturday? <laughs> um, we're trying to figure that out right now, to be honest with you. Um, we were just in the offensive room, and we're trying to not just look at schemes and what we can do and all that stuff, but look at it relative to the score of the game. Because when you watch Army's defense, so much of it is relevant to the score of the game. They have a 14-point lead, a 21-point lead, a 28-point lead. They The offenses are running 47 plays against them, 51 like low-volume plays against them. Because not just it's not just Army's effectiveness of finishing, much like Navy, it's they uh, – they keep the ball from the opposing offense. So the defense rolls out there with limited snaps um, against them and and um, with the lead. It's always it's always easier to play defense with the lead. So uh, I don't know. We're 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 looking at that right now. Um, to say we have a solution would be a lie. Um, and again, it would be cheap talk. 
Coach, I know this could be potentially strategy, so I don't, I don't. But I want to ask about your quarterback going into it. I saw Zeno on the sideline being involved with the offense. What have you seen? I don't know if you want to tip off if he's going to well, play no, or not. We'll look, we'll look at Jacob's shoulder again today. He's getting treatment today. Um, we'll continue to monitor that situation. Uh, it's not a strategy thing. It's we'll see how it goes. And uh, what did you see out of him? Sorry, to, like on the sidelines. Was Jacob he... was awesome. Yeah. I mean, the, the kid's just an awesome kid. He's a professional. Um, like he, I told him Friday, like he didn't have to go to the travel stuff. Like he could have taken a spa break on Friday and Saturday morning and had me time. And instead, he sat in every meeting, was fully engaged. Um, helped the quarterbacks. He sat in the, the snack room Friday night at the hotel for the entire time um, and was with his teammates. And um, like he's just, he's a model teammate. And sorry, one more. Uh, with the, with, with Kitna, what did you kind of see? You kind of said Warrior after the game, mm -hmm. after looking at the tape. I mean, that was a tough situation for him to be put in. Were you impressed with how he kind of came out was, of that one? I was super impressed with his competitive temperament. You know, he competed at a super high level. And that, that word can get whitewashed sometimes, but what I mean by that was that he, he was he was truly focused, regardless of score, and trying to play his best football. Uh, he had not started a game in four years. Um, I fully expected there to be some um, mistakes. The mistakes he made was he tried to put on the Superman cape. You know, he tried to do more than what was there. Um, the positive is that he didn't make many like just mental mistakes, like XO mental mistakes. Like he read coverages correctly, he saw fronts correctly, he handled the operation correctly. Um, for the most part, his eye progression was was solid. Um, it's when things when he felt like he could make a play to try to save us, you know, put get in the get in the um, phone booth and put on the cape and turn into Superman, that got him in trouble. Um, he didn't have a lot of help. You know, he was under duress. Um, I stopped yesterday as I was grading the film. I was doing a quarterback hit tape, and I stopped keeping track because <laughs> it was the kid just took some brutal shots and um, never, never flinched. Um stayed the same that's the thing about Jalen that's so impressive is that he is the same person every single day regardless of circumstance um, and he never changed during the week <clears throat> as he anticipated starting the game he never changed in the midst of an absolute disaster in game and he was exactly the same after the game he was exactly the same yesterday and um, that's something you know, Nick Coleman has done a phenomenal job in that room um, teaching these young men how to play football but also how to play the game of life. And uh, he's he's an example of that. Uh, offensively as a whole, not just this past week, but five games, uh, just doesn't seem there's there's been maybe a rhythm that there was last year at, uh, for, for a lot of the year. What – Kind of your evaluation of what's what's gone wrong there, and 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 you know how do you fix it? Um, you know, I, I I didn't anticipate any of this. Obviously, you know, I was very optimistic about our chances of being a, a really good football team. I, I didn't have a win loss total behind that, um, but I felt we would be highly efficient offensively. I didn't know if we'd be as explosive without Tejon, right? Um, and with some youth, you know, you're going to have youthful mistakes. Um, but I thought we'd be really efficient. We have not been efficient. Um, I thought we'd be really physical. You know, that was the one thing we really focused on, and, and we have not been as physical as we expected. So... Um, when you're when you're banking on physicality and efficiency and you're not getting it like you're stuck with nothing so um it's been a challenge to figure out what our identity is offensively uh, and then you have you know a quarterback change you have injuries um which are all part of the game they're not excuses but you, you have to 
adapt to those. So to say to sit here and say I have a solution, I don't. Like I'm working on them. You know, we all are. Um, you know, I, I hope people understand that uh, as much as they hurt, we hurt more. <laughs> and we uh, we are completely invested in trying to fix this. And um, again, those are cheap words, but that's what we're doing today. Um, and that's what we started doing yesterday is we are actively looking for solutions to get everything back on track. Just, just r real quick on that. W when you are going through a tough time like that, like this, uh, is it is there temptation to tear things up? You know, whether it be personnel, whether it be what you do, whether it be you know coaches, whatever it may be. Is there a temptation to do that? I, I think that is. It's a it's a very good question. Um, it is. It's what people talk about. Right. It, it is a it's a method that has been used, which is, hey, if it isn't working, blow it up. I, I understand that. Um, if I felt that I had done my job as well as I could do it and others had let me down, then I think that would be a. A logical move. When I say it is my fault, it is my fault. Um. I have not allowed the defensive staff to do what they should do. Um, I have I have gotten in the way of the offensive staff. I have not um, taught our players football to the level which I know I'm capable of teaching them. Um, one of the things that I've always been told I do well, I have not done well here, is take the highly complex and make it simple. That is something since I was a young football player that all my coaches, all my teammates always said it's the consistent theme in me as a player and my limited coaching experience but my lead 11 coaching experience is that I had the ability to take really complicated things and make them really simple, take calculus and turn it into fifth grade math and people go, oh, cool, like I get it now. I've done a very poor job of doing that here. Um, so I say all that because I'm not going to blow it up when it's my fault. Like, I'm not going to point the finger. I'm not going to be the one that, that says, you know, our defense stinks because it's Sione's fault. Like, I, I don't believe that. I believe it's my fault. Um, our offense hasn't been as good this year um, because we lost players or whatnot. And I'll say, no, our offense hasn't been as well because I haven't taught offense as well. And I've gotten in the way of some things that maybe we should we should have done that I didn't allow us to do. Um, culturally, you know, I, I worked really hard on trying to create um, the right culture, and I think I overcomplicated the culture. So, like again, I, I please understand that I mean this. This is not lip service. Um, this is my fault. And uh, if you're if you're angry, be angry at me. Um, don't be angry at a group of kids that have really poured out everything they have and, and bought into uh, what we've asked them to buy into, and and you know a, a community that um, really is looking for us to represent them well. Um, a fan base, like I, I get it. If you're angry. I don't blame you be angry at me, but please don't be angry at these people that are, are working really, truly hard uh, at finding what's best for them. And, and I got to find a way to help uh, unlock that instead of um, keep it sequestered. So, Coach, maybe this is like a media question more for a coach, and coaches don't agree with this, but besides week one, your best game – against Arkansas. I know you're locked in, but we saw they just rushed the field against Tennessee. Do you use that as a spark? Like, look what we did against a team that's taken on a top five, top ten team. I mean, does that look at – do you look at that at all? All right, I'm going to read you something. This is not purposeful. This just happened to be on my desk, sitting underneath this mic. This is what I talked to the team about last night. I said, the only way to beat 
a lie is with truth, and truth is love. The first thing I put was we are the exact same group that gave Arkansas all they could handle. We're the same group. Nothing's changed. Um, the second truth was that we've played worse since then. That's truth. Um, there's some other things that I want to keep quiet, but, you know, like we started with the truth. I, w I want these kids to understand and these coaches to understand that um, we are way more capable than we've played this year. And uh, now it's, it's up to me to try to find a way, again, I'll use this term, to unlock everybody so they can play to their potential. I do not believe we've done a poor job in recruiting. Like, I just don't believe that. I've seen these players play at their other schools, play in high school, compete at a high level, practice at a high level. Um, for whatever reason, it's not happening in the game. I, I've never met a player, and I said this in the team meeting last night. I pointed at a couple guys. I said, hey, did you wake up Saturday morning and decide to miss that tackle? I'm like, no. I'm like, did you decide to do the wrong thing? No. Did you decide? Like, they don't wake up and decide not to be their best. They're waking up and trying the best way they know how to be their best. Something is inhibiting that. And I think what great head coaches do, which I am not in that category yet, is they find a way to unlock that potential and allow a player to go out there and, and be what they want to be. Um, and I don't, again, that's my soul searching is – how how do I how do I become that coach that allows them to be the best they can be? Thanks, you guys. Thanks, coach. Appreciate you. Mm -hmm.